Um, and it, to define what we mean by a fast takeoff, it's defined as when AI goes from roughly human level to far beyond human very quickly, think months to a few years, faster than governments, companies or society can adapt with little warning, big power shifts and hard to control. A slow takeoff, by contrast, is where capabilities climb gradually over many years with lots of warning shots. I call it face RIPs. We can talk about it in details. But the, the, the way we define very important parameters in life are going to be uh, completely changed. So, so face RIPs are, you know, the way we define freedom, uh, accountability, human connection and equality, economics, uh, reality, innovation and business and power. So the first change in my mind is that, uh, is that we uh, will have to prepare for a world that is very unfamiliar. And that's the next 12 to 15 years. We've seen examples of it in the world already, even though people don't talk about it. But on the other hand, I started to take an active role in building amazing AIs. So AIs that will uh, not only make our world better, uh, but that will understand us, understand what humanity is through that process. So in my, in my mind, these are adverse circumstances that unfortunately might escalate beyond our control. The problem is the, uh, there is a lot wrong with the um, value set, with the ethics of humanity at the age of the rise of the machines. And when you take a technology, every technology we've ever created just magnified human abilities. You get in a car and you can now go, you know, 250, 280 miles an hour. And, and what AI is going to magnify, unfortunately, at this time, is it's going to magnify the evil that men can do. And, and it is within our hands completely, completely within our hands to change that. But I have to say, I don't think humanity has the awareness uh, at this time to focus on this so that we actually use AI to build the utopia. So what you're essentially saying is that you now believe there'll be a period of dystopia and then you think we'll come out of that dystopia into a utopia which is defined as a perfect or ideal place where everything works well, a good society where people live in peace, health and happiness. So, And, and the difference between them interestingly is what I normally refer to as the second dilemma which is the po point where we hand over completely to AI. So a lot of people think that when AI is in full control, it's going to be an existential risk for humanity. You know, I have enough uh, evidence to, to argue that when we fully hand over to AI, that's going to be our salvation. That the problem with us today is not, you know, that intelligence is gonna work against us. And I think the challenges that will come from humans being in control uh, are going to outweigh the the challenges that could come from AI being in control. So as we're in this dystopia period, did you did you forecast the length of that dystopia? Yeah, I count I count it exactly as 12 to 15 years. I, I believe the beginning of the slope will happen in 2027. We've seen signs in 24, but we will see escalating signs next year and then a, a, a clear uh, slip in 27. I mean, you really have to think deeply about not the not the symptoms, but the the reasons why we are living the world that we live in here in today is money, right? And uh, and money for anyone who knows who really knows money, money is you and I are peasants. You know, real money is made in lending, in fractional reserve, right? And and you know the biggest lender. Uh, in the world would want reasons to lend. And those reasons are never as big as war. Uh, the world spent $2.71 trillion on war in 2024, right? And when you really think deeply, I don't mean to be scary here, hmm? uh, you know, weapons have depreciation. You know, the current arsenal, I think, we, we think cost the US 24 to $26 trillion to build. My, Conclusion is that a lot of the wars that are happening around the world today are a means to get rid of those weapons so that you can have replace them. And, uh, you know, when, when your morality as an industry is, we're building weapons to kill, then, you know, you might as well use the weapons to kill. War is decided first 
then the story is manufactured. You, you know, remember 1984 and the Orwellian approach of like, you know, uh, freedom is slavery and uh, war is peace and they call it uh, something sp speak. Uh, basically, to, 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 to convince people that going to war in another country to, f to kill 4.7 million people is freedom. To, to tell someone that you're gonna kill 300, thousand women and children is for liberty and for the, 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 you know, for human values. The story is manufactured and then we follow and humans, because we're gullible, uh, we cheer up and we say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the idea is that really money is driving a lot of the conflict we're seeing and it's really going to be driving the dystopia because actually yeah. what a billionaire wants isn't actually more money. It is more status. What we've, but what has always mattered from a survival of the fittest, from a reproductive standpoint, what's always had reproductive value, if you go back thousands of years, the person who was able to mate the most was the person with the most status. So it makes the case, the reason why billionaires get all of this money, but then they go on podcasts <laughs> and they want to start their own podcast and they want to buy newspapers is actually because at the very core of hu human beings is a desire to increase their status. And, and it's, this prime minister or this leader or this you know individual wanting to create more power and more status because really at the heart of what matters to a human being is having more power and more status and money is actually money as a thing is actually just a proxy of my status so, so can, can i can i can and i actually ai is the same because we're in this ai race now where a lot 100%, of tech billionaires 